Wakefield. It's the Nolan Cart Night Show, star Nolan. But you join Nolan and his guests this week, Thor Bjorn, to the show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Nolan. And welcome back, everyone, to another edition of the show. And as I said to you all uh, before in the past, uh, I had some big names. I wanted some big names on. And, you know, this I, I, I want to do this, and I, I'm surprised I was able to do it. But my guest this time, you know, gladly did for you for me set time aside to do and i can't begin to express my gratitude he is the athletic director at the university of rhode island the one and only thor bjorn thank you for joining me this week oh uh, no it's great to have great to be here with you thank you for reaching out of course well obviously uh, as i always do i catch up with my guests so how, how's life treating you as you know this this new school year's under go i'll tell you it's been uh, it's been exciting it's been great it really does feel back to normal you know started really in august with with our uh, fall teams coming back and competing and practicing and and now with with school starting on wednesday i mean just walking around campus yesterday it was a whole different vibe and a whole different yeah. feel and and it's uh, certainly welcome so it's been it's been great well, I, I think people are you know looking forward to you know having this done with granted you know it's just now starting the fall season hopefully winter doesn't get screwed up but i think you know people are ready for this to end but you know there's still the fight, you know, continues to end this. No doubt. We'll get there. Feeling, feeling pretty positive about it. Now, the sport season, the fall season has already, st- the, already started. Soccer has started. Football has started amongst a few other. And URI football had a uh, big win against, Bri- uh, big win against Bryant and uh, the soccer, they had their game the other night. How do you, what's your thoughts so far on how, how URI sports is starting so far? You know, I think it's great. You know, as you said, the, the Bryant win was a good win for us and a great way to start the season on the football side. And, uh, you know, big game on Saturday against Albany. So looking forward to having conference pay, play start. You know, men's soccer has had a really, I think also, again, a very strong start. Great crowd against Providence College at home on Monday night. I think we had almost 3,000 people there. And, you know, it was a down late and came back and scored and had a chance to win it, uh, win it late. But, uh it was a heck of a game, and and uh, you know I think another a great thing to build upon as we go into conference play, and you know the 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 two other programs, women's soccer, you know in terms of the win loss column, maybe struggling a bit, but they're playing so well and so much yeah. better, and and it's that's exciting to see, and you know they just need to be able to put the ball in the net a little bit, and and once they can do that, I you know they're good enough to win, I think a few games this year, and and you know tribute to to Coach Jesse and her team for for battling through that. I'm I'm excited to see their growth. And then Angel Agu, brand new coach, uh, started in this summer with volleyball. And, you know, we, we really uh, did pretty well that first weekend, two and one, and then have played a brutal schedule since then. And, and so, um, you know, again, I'm really excited about what she can do for the program and, and build on some, you know, as a great player in this league at Dayton, uh, she's, she's going to do wonderful things for us. So all in all, I think really good. And I'm sure in that situation, I, I, I want to go back to something else afterwards, but I'm sure in that situation, you obviously said new coach, you, I'm sure you have to have some level of expectation, but then also have to have a level of patience, especially if they're new, you know, waiting to develop their team and, you know, the players and not, and not just, you know, an immediate success. Oh my gosh, no, you're exactly right. Expectations have to be measured. And, and, and anytime you have a new, a new coach stepping in and, and, um, you know, and she was part of that staff last year that had come in as a, as a new staff. So, you know, I, I think all the confidence in the world that, um, you know, that she's going to be able to build something pretty special. And I think with any of our programs, you know, you can't look for quick fixes. You got to look for, you know, long-term growth and, and long, long-term sustainability and, and building a program. So, no, I'm, I'm very confident with that and, and not at all concerned. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned, you know, the humongous crowd in terms, I would think, soccer for you or I, the game the other night. And I saw, you know, online on Twitter that the tickets for the upcoming weekend game for the football team sold out for, I, I want to say, the alumni day or whatever the situation was specifically in the weekend prior, tickets were in out pretty fast. For you, obviously, we would like to have a season this year for all sports and not have a repeat of last year, hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood. As someone who's leading the charge for athletics, you see, you know, crowds coming back. How do you, how are you, how do you manage, or how are you going to be able to manage, you know, and make sure, you know, stuff doesn't repeat again where stuff gets shut down? Sure. You know, the good news is there's so many uh, people that are playing professional sports, college sports all over the country. So I think we're in a very different place than we were last year. 
I think from a student perspective, we're, um, you know, the, the vaccinations are, are really high on campus. So I, I don't know what the number is. It's, it's, it's close to 90% or, or over that. So I think that's really good. And then just in the general community, you know, the numbers of vaccines are, are pretty high. So I only say that because, you know, people are, are taking care of that side of the business. So I think and feel confident that, you know, we are going to be able to compete and play, play with fans in the stands. Um, you know, we got to get back to that normalcy. So I'm, I'm yeah. confident we're, we're going to be able to get there. Uh, you know, we'll certainly follow back to your other question. I mean, we'll follow whatever requirements and protocols are, 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 are laid out for us. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I watch a lot of Red Sox games as an example. I know it's outdoors, but yeah. some great crowds there and, and people are, are watching and cheering and having fun with it. And so, you know, I think the same thing can be said for, for our athletic events. You know, we've had great crowds at football and, and soccer's, both soccer's have had great crowds. So, you know, again, I feel very confident that we'll, we'll, we'll be able to play uh, in, in as relatively normal a fashion as possible. Yeah. Will people have to wear masks? Yeah, we've already said that in the Ryan Center for the short term. Okay, that's fine. You know, most importantly, we'll be there, in my opinion. Well, I'm, 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 they've been chewing at the bit to get back to the Ryan Center and lose my voice not as much as jv does but i've been <laughs> chewing, at the, chewing at the bit as i try to go every um game now uh, if we can r go back in time um for a little bit obviously before you or i you were at um umass and um i mean how much i mean obviously that was i don't want to say a while ago but that um wasn't yesterday how much of that time back then is present in today I'll tell you, it was, um, you know, I went to school at UMass and played football there and then worked there for 14 years, just about 14 years before coming here and just finished my 14th year here. So it's, it has been quite a while, but, you know, uh, so much of what I learned was, was developed there. You know, I was uh, in charge of tickets and game operations during the early nineties when, you know, John Calipari was there coaching and Marcus Camby was playing. And then I switched into marketing and corporate sales and, and, then uh, eventually served as an interim athletic director and, and um, senior associate. So I've had a, I had a lot of different opportunities to, to learn and grow. And, and that provided me the avenue to, to come to Rhode Island, you know, when I was 39 years old. And, and I can't believe it's been 14 years. It's going by so fast, but it's been uh, it's been so great. And I, I was just it's funny this weekend. I was just sitting here thinking, wow, I I've worked at Rhode Island now longer than I did the University of Massachusetts. And that that kind of blew my mind. And yeah. uh but it's pretty special. So I'm, you know, just very honored and thrilled to be here. And I, I want to, you know, kind of talk about that, you know, learning and developing and whatnot. And the last few guests I've had, I kind of, I, I try to, you know, echo that statement, learning about yourself. For you, obviously, you just mentioned you moving up in different areas. And then obviously you get to the big house as the uh, interim athletic director. For you, though, how do you, I don't want to say humble, but sort of in that sense where you're, you're moving to a new direction in charge of a a different group back then geez you know it, it's it's i'll be honest you, you think you really do know everything when you when you set foot on uh you know in, in a new job and and i remember i'll tell you a quick funny story you know going through the interview process i i was expecting that you know what are your strengths and weaknesses question because everybody gets it right and i was talking to the ad i worked for at the time at umass and i said hey well, what's the best answer what do you think and he said as it relates to weaknesses and he said, tell him you don't have any, you feel, you feel confident that you're uh, you've been putting in a lot of time and energy and you feel you're ready. And, and so I laughed cause I did. And I, I did, I believe, I, of course I had weaknesses, but I yeah. believed that I was ready. And, uh, and then about a month on the job, I'm like, wow, I, I definitely have work to do. I have yeah. a lot to learn. And, and a lot of it was managing people, you know, although I did some of that at, at UMass and, and, you know, the idea of always having to be on the idea that as it relates to athletic initiatives, truly the buck does stop with you. So you've got to be able to answer those questions as the number two person at UMass. I tried to keep as much off the AD's desk as I could, but every once in a while, when it became a really, really, really big issue, he, he had to, he had to take it. And so that was one of the things that took a while to not a while, but you realize quickly that that was, you know, part of the, part of the job and part of the challenge. And, um, but again, I've, I've learned, so much. And, and over these last 14 years, I've learned so much. I've learned the importance of, you know, fit as it relates to building a staff and, and making sure people have shared values and, and uh, you know, true 
desires of what they're trying to be part of and you know winning at all costs mentality isn't what i'm looking for you know we do want to win we want to win championships but we want to do it the right way so all those different factors come into play i think you learn more and and you build your own identity the older you get now uh, as it's obviously no an athletic director of uri moving from umass now what was going through your head i'm curious and want you to lead the charge here at URI in terms of athletics and then taking that, you know, big leap. When I got the job? Yeah. When it's funny, they actually read the chair of the search committee reached out to me with, with an email and, and, I, and I got, I thought it was just a generic one, but then there were some specific UMass thoughts that were in it. So, um, you know, when I, when I applied, I, I remember talking again, same athletic director. I said, Hey, talk, you know, what do you think about Rhode Island? It's, you know, it's a good job. And I'll never forget what he said. There's only 350 of them out there. Um, and so it is a good job. And the fact that it's, I, you know, again, in a lot of ways, I call it a sister school to UMass. We play against each other in so many things and same leagues at the time, same football and basketball league. So it was, um, and I knew I wanted to be an athletic director. So what better chance to do it in New England with another A-10 school and, and you know, 45 minutes from where I grew up in Connecticut, it, it just seemed to be the perfect fit. And as I went through the process and the search process, things just kept working out and working out. And when I when I did get that phone call to uh, to come back and meet with Bob Carruthers, the president at the time, um, where he was going to offer me the position, you know, it was just it was it was a great honor. A little overwhelming and at first, yeah. if I'm going to be honest with myself, and but uh, but a really cool experience. Now. You, you're obviously leading the charge in turn, as I like to say, keep saying, um, in terms of bringing in coaches, I would think, along with you know, other um, people helping out in that term. Um, last season was a pretty big year for the women's basketball program, amongst uh, many other programs. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you know, expectations being set, as well as patience in terms of who they're hiring, I would think that as as the athletic director you know pretty impressed in terms of how she turned around that program would, would you would you would you be able to agree with that oh i think tammy's amazing she's a not only is she an amazing person but she is a great coach she's a great leader of of women uh on on her team and and she's become someone that i really quickly admire and, and trust and and greatly appreciate her you know as a co-worker and, and as a friend you know she's She's special. She's got, she truly has it from a cliche standpoint. And, you know, I'm, I'm confident she's going to do great things here. And, uh, you know, we've struggled the women's basketball for years. There's no, just go back and look at the records. There's no, there's no denying that. And the fact that we finished in fourth place this year, this past year, um, you know, I think we're going to be picked pretty high going into this upcoming season. Um, And there's a lot of excitement and enthusiasm about, about her program, the way she coaches and the players that she has. So, I'm excited about women's basketball. I'm, I'm happy to hear other people talking about it and talking about, you know, hey, this is going to be fun. And, and that's, a, again, a great tribute to, to Tammy because she's gotten out there. She's truly become the face of women's yeah. basketball in, in Rhode Island or at Rhode Island. And uh, people want to see see her in real life. Yeah. You know, they want to see her emotion or enthusiasm and uh, and see her teams play. So, no, she is. She's legit. She's she is it. Well, I had Will Pipicelli on last week, who's a, a, a reporter. I'm sure you sure. know who that is. Um, but he, he he told me a story which I found pretty interesting. When he first, him and Nolan Riley, when they both sat down with her to have an interview, you know, they walked away like, darn, I, I, I wish I could play for that program. I'm sure for you, you know, he, not just hearing that, but, you know, seeing the sort of vibe switch that she's brought to the team is you know a sense of accomplishment that you played some role in you know bringing her into this program well i'll never forget the first conversation that we had and and um you know it was just in a phone call we we uh hadn't even started the formal interview process yet but i was proactively reaching out to coaches and jane donaldson brought in her name as someone that that he had heard has some potential interest from her time as an assistant coach at syracuse so we set up a time and talked i was driving up to see our softball team play at providence and um that hour, that, excuse me, half hour, 40 minute conversation was great. And the thing that I remember most about it, and I say this all the time, I said it at a press conference, I'll say it, I say it a lot because it meant a lot to me, was when she said, you know, Thor, you haven't asked me my strengths and weaknesses. And uh, she, I know I've shared you my strengths, but my weaknesses, I've never been a head coach, but I want you to know why. And what she said was 
the thing that I will never forget. She said, I wasn't ready, but I'm ready now. So that self-awareness, that self-confidence to be able to share that told me that, hey, this is a person that knows who, who she is, comfortable in her own skin, and, and truly is ready to be a head coach. And she's obviously proven that. It, it, I mean, it, it, it's visible in terms of, you know, what she brings to the program, as I mentioned, a, a vibe switch, but also bringing in players and, you know, players being excited to play for this program and people excited to watch um, for that. Um, but I mean, I'm sure it, it's just, it's, it's an interesting and it's an enjoyable process to see what is happening with this program. For you, um, I'm curious on your perspective. Let's say they do better this year. They win the A to tournament and they make it to the NCAA tournament. What does that do for the program here at URI as well as their women's basketball image? Well, it's been a long time. I think 1996 since the last time we went to the NCAA tournament. And um, so what it does is, is it, it allows you to sort of be on, on that national stage, as you know. But then the most important thing is what are you going to do about it? You can't just sit back and say, okay, we did it. Great. Let's wait another 25 or 30 years to do it again. You have to keep investing in that program. You got to keep, you know, uh, really providing the coaches and the student athletes with what they need to sustain and grow it because now you're on that scene and people are going to come after you. You're not going to surprise anybody anymore. And I, you know, I, I think it's, it's easy sometimes from diff different schools perspectives to say, okay, we did it. We're fine. We've reached that pinnacle. We don't need to do anything else. It should just happen again. And that's such a short sighted way of thinking. Yeah. That's the time to invest even more. And, and to, to say that we like being on top, we like to be the winners, you know, we want to be up there. So therefore, um, you know, let's, let's keep making sure that, that we continue to elevate the program. And, and there's a lot of good things that we're doing, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a major locker room renovation for the program, the basketball practice facility that's being built now, obviously playing in a great facility in the Ryan Center. There's a lot of strategic investments being made. Uh, the next ones are probably around more charter flights for a program to get to where they need to get to and get home and et cetera. So got to keep investing. When we reach that pinnacle, when we get to, the, you know, reach our goal of winning a conference championship and go to the tournament or getting in that large bit to the tournament, we don't want to stop there. That's that's the attitude you want to have, not not stopping the train. Now I I, I talked to this with Stone Freeman a, a few months ago. The last few years there there's um there's been a lot of people, a lot of athletes I should say, mo moving around and going from one school to another. Now I I know you're part of you know many numerous different uh, committees and groups and stuff like that. But from athletic director, you see you know these players going to a school, whether it be, you know, your own school, whatnot, and then they invest time, these coaches and athletic directors invest time to these players, and then they play, and then you end up seeing them move, move to a different school. From your perspective, it must be a little disappointing seeing all this commotion in, you know, college sports when, you know, you're putting in so much time and then it, the return doesn't fully come through. You know, it's a great question. And I think as a um, idealist, if, you know, or a traditionalist, I would love to see, you know, student athletes come and stay at a school for four years, graduate, get their degrees and, and really stay connected with, um, with the fan bases that they're so, you know, become so familiar with. And I think most recently, you know, those, those teams that uh, under Dan's last two years, you know, with, with the Jeff Downs and the Surreals and, and ECs and Jared Terrells and, and Hassan Martins, you know, guys that came in and finished yeah. um, fats even last year, you know, finishing their degree, earning their degrees here. Um, but that's not the reality anymore. So, you know, what can you do about it? I think in part, you, you know, you try to provide the best possible experience you can, but you know what, I know we're doing that and we still lose players sometimes, you know, and other schools are, are losing players because we're getting them. And it's it just kind of, you know, it's yeah. funny. I think coaches are going to start looking and having to determine, do they, do they want to recruit the transfer portal or do they want to recruit freshmen? And, you know, that's a hard decision. And it's, it, it's tough on a fan base too, especially, and I'm, again, I'm not just saying this, a very special, unique fan base that the University of Rhode Island has where our fans want to get to know and support these student athletes for yeah. four years. They really do. And whether it was 50 years ago, and, and I'll tell recruits this every time I meet them, especially on the basketball side, 
fans will never forget you. If you're, if you've been part of this program for, for four, four or five years, they will never forget you ever, like ever. Yeah. It, you'll never be forgotten. Um, you know, but if you come in and you're here for a year or two and then you leave, you know, you know, you, you a little bit, you know, you're, you're not part of the story again. Yeah. So, you know, I, th I think we try to sell, I know we try to sell that family environment, that, that really tight knit deal. And, um, but unfortunately, and I, by unfortunately, I just mean, you're, it's, it's, I feel bad because you're not getting yeah. to know these players as much, you know, yeah. they have every right to do it and that's their choice. Um, but, you know, someone said to me once, this is again, a silly cliche, so forgive me. The grass may be greener on the other side, but you still got to mow the lawn. And that's yeah. how it is. I mean, every, no place is perfect. Yeah. Now, on another note, another more, uh, I would think, positive or happy note, um, another, you know, obviously you, we talked about football earlier. There, it, it, You're right. I, I don't want to, you know, seem like, you know, I'm saying you're right is bad, but you're right. I don't think is known necessarily for their – uh, draft p p players that get drafted in the NFL post, you know, playing in college. Last year, that was not the case, or two years ago, whenever it might be. And there was a few players from Europe and they got drafted. For you, seeing that happen at this school, the one you work at, it, it must be, you know, pretty, you know, exciting. You see, um, I'm, I'm forgetting the name. The, he played. He played for um the Cowboys, and um. I mean, it must for you though. It must be pretty exciting and happy to see that you know the work that you you and your staff are putting in to see that these players are getting drafted. You know, that's it must be a special thing. It is, yeah. You know, and I I look at the number of guys on you know Aaron Parker who you were talking for Houston, but you know Isaiah getting drafted, Aaron signing a a, a contract and staying on the pack, practice squad with the Cowboys and and Kyle Murphy uh, with the Giants. I mean, that's pretty special and pretty unique for an FCS football program to be able to have three guys on rosters. But then you throw in Dave Steinmetz, who's still with the Redskins, or he was. I mean, he may have been – I'm not sure if he was cut recently or not or if he made their roster. Uh, Tyler Canalino is playing up in Canada now. But, you know, guys that played for us, took their fifth year at, at other institutions but are, are playing on NFL rosters is pretty cool. You know, it, it, it shows us on the, in the recruiting trail, you come here, you can – you will be developed – and, and put in position where if you're good enough, you'll be able to play at the next level. And CAA football has certainly proven that yeah. uh, time and time again. And, and, you know, Rhode Island having some guys on those rosters now is pretty special. Now, if you have to, you know, weigh the two, I mean, if, you know, does it have the same, you know, level of, you know, help for the program as, you know, if, you know, the women's, you know, basketball team made it to the NCAA tournament? In terms you of mean uh, having the roster? I, yeah. I think, I think it, it helps. It's part of that recruiting deal. No different than, you know, when, when uh, Tammy has, t has women that are going to be playing professionally, whether overseas or, or uh, you know, if we get that kid that makes it to the WNBA, I think that's really positive. But from a team championship perspective, getting to that NCAA tournament, I think is more valuable, to be honest with you. You know, some people will say that, that you know, certain student athletes are, are a little bit more self-centered and focused on their own achievements. I don't agree with that. I think, you know, it's a team sport. They want to win. They want to win at a high level. And yeah. if they're good enough to, to make that next level they're you know, it's even far more fulfilling if they're able to get to a championship too. So I think playing as a, you know, playing in the NCAA tournament is a greater recruiting tool than having a few folks that make a professional team. Although both are really yes. pretty cool. Yes. Um, besides, you know, that part, you know, you know, staying the four years or, you know, making it into the next level or success. Uh, and I often see this at, you know, the multiple games throughout the season, the last many years that I've been paying attention to the URI basketball, URI also, and I think you, you as well as one of the biggest, um, people in that situation take great pride in their athletes, as well as them succeeding in the classroom and, you know, bringing them onto the court. And this person made this amount of times on the honor roll and this and that. How important is it for you that, you know, these athletes not only succeed on both, you know, the athletic field, but as well as the classroom in order to you know, make sure they're here? It means everything. You know, it, it's deans that you've seen it when we when we honor all our deans list yeah. students at half court and we're bringing out 250 of our, you know, 400 student athletes and, and that, that have made the deans list. That's a really special night. I mean, it shows that we have proper perspective that, you know, we, we can compete at a high, very high level. And we can put our, our teams in position to compete on both the regional, conference-wide, and national, you know, 
showcase, but at the end of the day, they're going to leave here with a great education, something that no one can ever take away from them. You know, I remember saying that to my daughters when they got their degrees from URI a couple of years ago. I said, you know, see this diploma? No one can ever yeah. take that away from you. You earned it. That's pretty special. And, you know, our student athletes are, are just achieving academically at, at a great, great level. And, and they're leaving here with incredibly valuable degrees. It sounds corny. It's really what we're all about. Yeah. And I really, really believe that. I mean, to me, it's the most important gift, tool, whatever, not gift, that's not the right word, but it's the most important thing we can provide a student because, um, you know, that's, a, that's something they'll have with them forever. Now, you know, I, I want to ask this question because I've been I've been curious about this, you know, for a while. I need to talk to my dad and grandfather about this. Now, when I look up at up at, you know, in the Ryan Center and I look at the retired numbers, there's only maybe a few. And the last one was in the, the 50s. I'm curious on the process in turn. Like, how do they how do you decide? I, I mean, obviously, you weren't there in 1957. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you know this. I, I would hope hopefully you do. Um, when they decide to retire them, so I'm sure there've been a lot of players that you've seen over the last numerous years that you think deserve to be retired up in the banners. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And a lot of people have asked about it. And we've talked about trying to formalize um, the, the best way to go about it, because there's not a lot of numbers that are retired here on campus. And on the football side, it's Tom Ryan. I mean, not Tom Ryan. That's the Ryan Center. Um, Tom Earhart. Um, you know, in basketball, it's, it's just a couple. And I think two and, and two men and one woman. Um, so we need to do that. I mean, we certainly have some great, great players that um, that deserve to have their 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 numbers up on the Raptors or their names. Probably don't yeah. necessarily retire numbers, but retire names. Um, but it, that shouldn't be the athletic director's decision. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't have that right. I will never earn the right to make the decision of who should go in there and who shouldn't. So how do you formalize that? We have a Hall of Fame selection committee. It seems to me that that would be a really good you know, pathway to get some nominations of people and, and then to start that process. The, I mean, that's got to be the highest pinnacle of, of, of achievement that you can get. That's higher than being in the Hall of Fame. That is the best of the best. Yeah. So what, what's the criteria that we need to put in place? And, and we've got to get that you know, put together and, and, and really you know, finalize. And it's got to, in my opinion, it's got to be sort of across all sports you know yeah. the, the, the criteria needs to be very very similar across all sports and there's other schools that are doing it you you know you you know that as well as i do there's schools that have retired jerseys what's your what's your process what's your yeah. what are you going through because i want when we do this i want to make sure that those whose numbers are retired know that wow this is like the most deserving thing that you could ever have and uh and you know what? We've got to make that a, a bigger priority because I think you know we're ready to we're ready to start doing that, and it's a matter of sitting down and saying, okay, what's what's the best format? Now, Did that answer your question? Uh, I no, know. yes, no, that that oh, answers okay. it because um, and when they have you know the the those uh, like uh, winter vacation or you know spring break games or whatever it might have been, and you know, you can bring back you know you can go with family whatever it is. I'd always be looking up with my father and grandfather. And we'd always be wondering because. They're definitely a players that should be at some point. Absolutely now, agree. The, the, Absolutely. La, the last segment I kind of want to end with is I, I did this the last few weeks. I, I gave out like a word or a name or something like that. And I just, you just say one word that you think best describes it. Okay. Um, your athletics. Family. John, uh, Jim Fleming. Passionate. John Copeland. Legend. Tammy Reese. Energy. Uh, Keeney Jim. Historic. Uh, J uh, JV. I just keep wanting to say the best, but that's not good enough. That's not specific enough. Um, true, true Keeney Blue. <laughs> uh, Rody Ruckus. Crazy. Thor Bjorn. Lucky. Uh, I, I would think I, I would have to agree with that saying, you know, you're a pretty lucky guy to be in this situation. Well, I want to thank you, sir, for spending this time with me doing this. It, it, I, I, I truly say this, you know, I, I can't say it enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you sincerely as, as best I can to 
set, uh, set some time aside and help me out with this. I greatly appreciate it. Well, let me just say to you, thank you for giving me the chance to, to spend some time with you. Uh, I really appreciate it. And for all you do and for your enthusiasm for your school and, and for uh, this athletic program. Thank you for everything. Oh, thank you. Now, for those out there, you know, um, for, if you like this, please like this, because, you know, down the road when this gets big, and I always joke about this, when this becomes big and it's the level of uh, Joe Rogan's thing, you're going to look back on this after Thor Bjorn gets inducted into the URI Hall of Fame for his contrib uh, contributions to the, the athletic program in the school. You're going to be like, wow, this episode, this was pretty gosh darn good. So like, subscribe, follow, share, do all the rest. Follow on Instagram and Twitter. And, you know, I'll see you down the line. And in the words of Johnny Carson, I bid you all a heartfelt goodnight.